Hey bookers, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another book video. Listen, I'm gonna do all these book videos because I know that a lot of you guys do enjoy the book content and if you are new to the channel and you are discovering this media freak out tag on my channel, please do subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell. I do do book videos quite a lot and I also share what I'm currently reading all the time in my weekly vlogs. So if you are not aware of that, now you are. So welcome to the channel. Welcome back to another video. I am going to be doing the mid-year book freak out tag. Okay, we're in July as I film this. I don't know where we will be when I release this video. We could still be in August, but I really wanted to do this tag as a great way for me to not only share with you some of the books that I've read, but how I really feel about some of those books. So there's a number of questions for this tag um, where I'll be sharing some of my favorite books or disappointing books or books that were surprises or books that I want to read, books that I want to reread, that kind of thing. And I'm going to be sharing that with you today. Okay, so first one is best book I've read so far in 2021. And that's not a trick. That's not a tricky one for me. I've got them all here, child. That's not a tricky one for me. If you want to know why I picked this one, watch my last book video. You will see this is on Earth. We're briefly gorgeous. We are briefly gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. Ocean Vuong is a Viet Vietnamese poet. And this is a book where he is a son is writing letters to his mother who cannot read. And in these letters, he is raw, he's unfiltered, he shares everything from what he went through with his relationship with his mother, the dynamic, growing up, the relationship that he had with his grandmother, and also being a gay Vietnamese uh, young man who lives in New York. And it was phenomenally written. It just flowed. I loved it. There's so many people who uh, felt like they found it too flowery, but what do you expect from a poet? Like, what do you expect? Really? What do you expect? Um, but aside from that, they are just beautiful phrases, passages in this book that really stood out for me. And this book is the book that followed me for a while after I read it. I just really wanted to grab it again and reread it again. And I thought, nah, don't do that. Don't do that. You got a lot of books to get through, but I really, really, really love this book and I highly, highly recommend it. It is a bit of a, it's, it's a bit fiction and a bit nonfiction as well, uh, because he does share bits and pieces of his life in the book, but then other parts of the book are made up, but it is beautiful. It talks to social justice issues like being Vietnamese and gay in the United States and what he went through or what the character in the book went through and the relationship that the character in the book had with his mother once the mother found out that he's gay and all of that. Really, really beautiful, beautiful book and exceptionally written. Best book of 2022 so far. Best book. The next one is best sequel I've read so far in 2022. I have not read a sequel as yet. Um, the next book that I do plan on reading before the year is out, which is part of a three-part series of books, is um, Act Your Age Eve Brown from the Brown Sisters trilogy. And the second one is um, the second book by Jane Allen in the Black Girls Must Die Exhausted, uh, three trilogy series of books. So I really, really want to read those ones before the end of the year. At Your Age, Eve Brown is over there. And then the Jane Allen one, I haven't picked up yet, even though I have seen it at the bookstores. I'm really trying to do this thing where I stop buying books for a while. It's hard. It's tricky. But sometimes I ask my family members and my friends and my lover and the people in my life to buy me books. <laughs> The next point is favorite reread. Now, this is a book that I reread, uh, but never really spoke about rereading it. I read it, I think, around March this year, March, April this year. 
I love it. This is The Death of Vivek OG by Kweke Emezi. And I love this book so much. I rated it a five star. It's beautifully written. It's a beautiful story on finding yourself and identity and your journey in life. And, um, you know, owning your sexuality and it being okay to you know love who you want to love irrespective of who they are and um feeling free or feeling open enough to share who you are with those closest to you it's a very harrowing heartbreaking novel it's so heartbreaking it'll make you cry but it is beautiful oh my god it is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So I reread this. Why do I keep hearing noises in my house? Is there something that I need to know? So I reread this around March, April this year, and I loved it. Okay. A genre that you've been loving reading the most. Now, this is not necessarily a genre, but I would like to say that I've been loving reading translated works. I loved... Um, the Memory Police. I wasn't too crazy about The Memory Police, but I loved a man called Uva, and I loved, um, not before the coffee gets cold, I loved this one. Sweet Bean Paste, such a beautiful, quiet story. I loved this one. I loved a man called Uva. I'm looking to read Burn Sugar soon as well. I'm really loving translated works. I can't wait to read Pachinko as well. Oh, actually, I need to go get that one. Um, so there's, I've really been enjoying reading translated works, not necessarily particularly uh, a certain genre, but I love reading books written by authors from outside your country or just countries that aren't uh, in the w mm, countries that aren't in the west but countries where english is not the first language yes countries where english is not the first language really been loving those really been loving those all right um a new release that you haven't read yet but want to now this is new to me and i'm going to share these two with you because i really cannot wait to read them they are new to me they were released in 2021 i don't know if i've bought any books actually that were released in 2022 i don't think i have but these are new to me that i cannot wait to read the first one is by michelle zauner and it's called uh crying in h mart i really really love that cover I really, really love that cover. A, a, a story that is surrounding family, food, love, grief, uh, the relationship that she has with her mother as well, um, struggling with her mother's high expectations and all of that. I'm really, really looking forward to reading this one. And this one was selected for the Costa Novel, shortlisted, sorry, for the Costa Novel Award. And this is uh, by Elif Shafak. And this is the Island of Missing Trees. This one I, would, I gravitated towards because I know not much about the story. However, I know that the, 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 the trees can talk or the animals can talk or something along those lines. Um, two teenagers from opposite sides of divided Cyprus meet at a tavern in the country they both called home. Um, the tree witnesses their hushed happy meetings see and the tree can speak cha i think the tree can speak and will be there when the war breaks out and the teenagers vanish so the tree is like a living breathing thing obviously trees are living and breathing but you hear my chat so i'm really looking forward to reading these ones as well this one's upside down i'm really looking forward to reading these ones as well these ones are new to me to my collection of books and i'm really excited to read these too most anticipated release for the second half so the next one is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year and this one i don't have it with me yet because i don't think it's been released yet at this stage uh and it is the it girl by ruth Ware. i'll put it here i've only read <sighs> Two books by Ruth Ware. The one is a woman in the woman in cabin ten, and the second one is it's sitting over there. Where is it? The Turn of the Key, <laughs> which I really really loved. I loved the Turn of the Key. I think I rated it a five out of five, and it was just about this young woman. I think I talked about it as well somewhere 
in the last year uh, uh, in my videos, but it's about a young woman who takes up a job as a babysitter for this family who lives in this really like fancy smart house. And um, what ends up happening is the book is basically told through the letters that this young woman, the babysitter or the nanny rather, the nanny is writing to her barrister or her lawyer uh, because she's in jail for the murder of one of the children. So there's two kids, if I remember correctly, I read it a long time ago, but there's two kids and one of them ends up dead and it's a thriller. I really love that one. So I cannot wait to read the It Girl, which is the one that's going to drop sometime in the second half of the year. So sometime soon. And um, it's basically about a woman who goes on the hunt trying to find out what happened to a good friend of hers who happened to be the It Girl. I think something along those lines, but I'm really, really excited to look at it, to read that one as well, because um, one of my favorite genres is thriller. My favorite genre is thriller uh, in novels, and I can't wait to read that one too. Mm -hmm. So the next one is Biggest Disappointment. I've got two. I've got two. All right, I've got two. <sighs> you know, Bookstagram made me buy it. Booktop made me buy it. I did not like these books. I really did not like normal people. I really didn't. I have conversations with friends and I've heard that conversations with friends is better than this one. This one follows uh, Connell and Marianne and the they are two high school students and it follows them throughout their life in high school and in um varsity or college university in Dublin and they both have this you know Marianne is well known and she's popular at school and Connell isn't and they develop this relationship or really just toxic situationship with each other over the years where they break up and they get back together and this and that and um there's dynamics that are followed in this book that I really I just didn't get on with it um the grammar oh my god I really just didn't get on with it. I didn't like it. I think I rated it a one star or a two star. I don't know. I didn't like it. And uh, this one, Bookstagram made me buy it. Uh, TikTok made me buy it. This is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. I did not like it. I think I also rated this one a two. I, I don't know. It's on my Goodreads. If you are a reader and you want to follow my reviews and all of that, it's all on Goodreads. You can check it out on there. I really did not did not like this book it just reeked of um you know white supremacy and it reeked of just white people who have a lot of money who really just have Ugh, no i just didn't like it i didn't like it uh, i felt like i was reading about this really wealthy family that had squabbles about the dumbest things um that wanted the inheritance from their uh the father these siblings that wanted their inheritance from their parents when their parents passed away and they owned this island i was just like no catch me outside biggest really disappointment biggest surprise biggest surprise I never thought that reading about old people would be so much fun. I never thought, this is Richard Osman's The Thursday Mur Murder Club. I've spoken about this book so many times. I'm not going to get into the synopsis. Watch my previous book video. You'll see me speaking about it. Watch my vlogs. You'll see me speaking about it. But I never knew that I would enjoy reading about older people, older generational people so much. <laughs> I had such a great time reading this book. I had a phenomenal time reading this book. Um, it was funny. It's a cozy mystery. And ah, uh, when I tell you how hilarious these oldies, these grannies and grandpas are, uh, absolutely loved it. Loved it. Definitely get this one. If you're looking to read a cozy mystery or you want to read about grown people, older grandmamas and grandpapas who are just wild. And they're hilarious. I really enjoyed that one. It was a big surprise for me. Favorite but new I author or new to you? 
This is her debut novel and she's also new to me. So she is a new author. This is Luster by Raven Leilani. Loved it. Uh, it follows the story of Edie and she gets into a relationship with a married man. Long story short, she gets into a relationship with a married man and um, this man is in an open marriage and she ends up living with this wife and the husband. It's nuts. It's great. The social justice topics that are discussed in this, great. I've spoken about this at length in my vlogs and in my videos um, about books. So check it out there. If you're interested, is newest fictional crush. Not hard. Not hard. If you know Shane, you know Shane. Okay, um, Seven Days in June is also another one of my favorite novels of the year. This is definitely going to make it into the top 10 along with Ocean Vuong. I rated it a 5 out of 5. I do think I also even reviewed it on my Goodreads platform. Shane, the love that these two share. Yo. And the descriptions of Shane, the relationship the trauma that they endured, both of them growing up, but how they seem to have drifted apart over the years, but found their way back to each other through their writing and through the love that they share for each other and how hot Shane is described to be in this here book. Nah, Shane could get it. Shane could get it, okay? Like, Shane could get it anytime, anytime, Shane. Just come through. <laughs> Um, newest favorite character. Mm. I didn't think about that one. Newest favorite character. Oh, Talia Hibbert. So now this, the book is over there. I'm not going to go over there. Okay. I, I've been filming four videos today. I'm tired. I'm not going to go over there, but take a hint, Danny Brown. Oh, I love her. I feel like she is my spirit animal. I feel like she is amazing. She is smart. She is in literature. And that's something, a, a, a direction of study that I wanted to go when I was in varsity, but I couldn't because, you know, your parents are on some, you got to be a doctor, you got to be an accountant, you have to be something important in life. What is this? You want to go and study English, why? So I couldn't do that. But Danny in Take a Hint, Danny Brown is amazing she's funny she's articulate she's smart she is kind she is sentimental she's soft but she has this hard exterior which is typically me okay i have this really hard exterior but i'm i'm a freaking goo goo gaga on the inside and i related with her so much you know the, the social justice issues the representation she's a black woman doing her thing you know um with a body, you know, she's not your stereotypical woman that, you know, skinny and what have you. I love her. She's my favorite new fictional character. <sniffs> love her to death. Name a book that made you cry. The next one is name a book that made you cry. Easy. Easy. One of my recent finished books. I think I, yeah, I'm currently reading The Mothers by Britt Bennett. Britt Bennett. This made me cry for days. This is The Stationery Shop of Tehran by Marjan Kamali. It follows the love story of Roya and Balman and in, in, in Tehran growing up. They meet as 17 year olds in a stationery shop in Tehran because they love to read. They both love to read but because of the political unrest and the political injustices that are happening. Ooh, the power's back the power's back. Uh, so, but because of the political injustices and the political turmoil, it follows their love story and it is told in two dual different time spans. They don't end up together and, um, how they drift apart in this time. Roya moves over to the U S and marries someone else and Balmain moves on with his life as well. And, ah, uh, it's just, so heartbreaking. I cried. I cried while reading this book and I was listening to the audio version of this book as well. And I was just, 
like a book that made me happy and this is not gonna make sense to a lot of people this book made me happy in how it ended it's a very difficult story to read but you are left feeling hopeful and you're left feeling um, renewed by the love that Ezra had for her daughters and what she went through for her daughters it shows the power of a mother's love and it shows um, you know just how far love can go that it even though it's difficult it's hard love is hard but the love of a mother nothing like it and uh it just helped me the ending of this book helped uh made me feel the ending of this book made me feel very hopeful uh joyful for her daughters but also just ah uh, it's just so heartbreaking but it did make me happy in how it ended I felt hopeful that I can imagine that the story is going to continue in a positive light, especially for her daughter. And ah, I loved it. The, the loved next one is who most beautiful book you have bought thus far. Nothing tops this book for me. Look at this. Look at this. This is by far the most beautiful book I own in all of those books over there. It's beautiful. It's got gold flecks. This is Pachinko by Minjin Lee. I know nothing about Pachinko. I've heard about it. I've heard how great it is. It is a chunky book, but I don't want to know much about it. I really don't want to know much about it. Um, I've heard of Minjin Lee. I think Minjin Lee also wrote Kim... Oof, I forgot. I forgot that I'll write the name of the book down, but I can't wait to read this one. This one I think was released in 2017, 2016, somewhere around there, but it's one of the prettiest books I own. I love, can't, I've got dark legs to stick on, but you get my chat. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? Honestly, all the books that I have shared in my TBRs, in my wrap up, not my wrap ups, in my TBRs, I want to read all those books by the end of the year. But uh, I think the one that I'm most excited for currently right now is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Oh my gosh, the synopsis just sounds so amazing for me that I'm really looking forward to reading that book. And of course, um, the two that I did mention here. So yeah, that's pretty much it from me. I think that is the last one. Yes, that was the last one. That's pretty much it from me. My TV is going in the background because the power just came back on. So I'm gonna go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, click the bell, join the membership space, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, sayonara.